Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, quaternary structure, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the first level of structure for proteins is known as its primary structure, and there are different hierarchies of structure for proteins. Every single protein that we find in any cell or any organism has its own unique shape. And these shapes can be very, very complicated because there are lots of amino acids involved. And the unique shape allows them to carry out their own specific function in any organism. So for example, one protein that is in a lot of organisms is known as collagen. And the collagen proteins have a very specific shape designed as a function for structure. In contrast though, there's another protein that travels in our blood known as hemoglobin. It's still a protein, but as you can see from the diagram, it's got a very different structure. It's a different shape with different 3D parts and therefore it has a very different function from collagen. And actually hemoglobin is for the transport of oxygen. And there's many, many thousands of proteins that we could go through, but we'd be here for years. But the idea is that every protein has its unique 3D shape designed for that function. When a polypeptide gets made, i.e. a long chain of linked amino acids, the order of the amino acids determines that primary structure of the protein. For example, purple followed by yellow, orange and green, each representing a different amino acid, gives it a particular sequence that the polypeptide is designed to have. So by definition, the primary structure of a protein is the entire sequence of amino acids, or the order of amino acids. And remember, it's not usually only four amino acids long. Proteins can be many thousands of these long. Most polypeptide chains are made up of many hundreds of amino acids, so you can see that the order and sequence can be very, very long and complicated. And we know that there are 20 different naturally occurring amino acids, each of them having a different R group. And because there are 20, you can imagine there are trillions of potential combinations. If we were to take just a tripeptide, which is a peptide of three amino acids, and we chose only two different amino acids that they can be made of, that would be A, which is the purple one, and B, representing the yellow or orangey one, then you can see that even just with looking at tripeptides, there's already eight different combinations we can have with these two amino acids. So imagining a protein with many, many hundreds of amino acids and 20 different amino acids, there are so many combinations it's impossible to write them all down. So this almost limitless number of combinations in the primary structure allows every protein to have its own completely unique primary structure and therefore its own unique function too. So these massive combinations allow each protein to have its own structure and its own function. After the primary structure, the next level of organization of a protein is the secondary structure. So the polypeptide chains formed from joining amino acids together aren't always a straight line. So when we try to talk about condensation and hydrolysis, we describe the polypeptide as just this continuous long line. But it's actually not often in this format. Instead, the polypeptides organize themselves and fold up and the sections of the chain can curl and fold into two main structures. The first one is called an alpha helix. So here we have an alpha helix, and helix means something that's a coil shape or a spring shape, and you can see that it's kind of going round and round like a coil. And essentially this chain of amino acids from here has been wrapped around something and it looks like a coil. So this is one of the structures that the chains of amino acids can form. And in many proteins you can see alpha helixes as certain regions in that protein. The second shape that you can often see is a beta pleated sheet. So this is slightly different where we have amino acids kind of zigzagging up and down in these long rows. So the sheet kind of looks like this bumpy structure and they can line up parallel to each other. So the two structures we can see in a polypeptide are alpha helixes or helices and beta pleated sheets. So where do these shapes come from? Why do they form? Well, they arise due to the structure of the amino acids which make up the polypeptide. Every amino acid contains a COO group and every amino acid contains an NH group. This is even when they're bonded to the other amino acids. So let's look at a chain of amino acids here. Imagine we've got a blue followed by, say, a green, followed by a red. So this is just a tripeptide here. This is just looking at the atoms that we have. So the blue amino acid is just about here. The green amino acid would be the next one and the red would be this final one. And each one has a peptide bond linking them all up. And you can see that every single one of them has a CO group pointing up, and every one of them has this NH group. And these are important in forming either the alpha helix shapes or the beta pleated shapes. 
and this is due to hydrogen bonding. So the hydrogen found in the NH groups are slightly positive, but the oxygen in the CO groups are slightly negative because these bonds are polar. So this results in hydrogen bonding between amino acids. So let's say we've got a chain of amino acid running along here. And at one point along the chain, there's an amino acid and it's got a CO group pointing out of it. The O is slightly negative and the carbon is slightly positive. If we're talking about the same polypeptide chain, say it kind of winds around and eventually comes back on itself, we've got another amino acid here and it will carry on. And this has its NH group pointing out towards that CO group. And the N is more negative, the H is more positive. So this is the same polypeptide chain, but different amino acids that are quite distant from each other can link up to form these shapes. And we get a hydrogen bond linking these two amino acids. In a lot of cases, the amino acids don't need to be that far apart. In certain structures, we might have an amino acid hydrogen bonding with one which is only a few amino acids ahead. So actually the hydrogen bonds can be quite close to each other. So to illustrate this and how these shapes form, in an alpha helix, the polypeptide chain coils up and the hydrogen bonds keep the coil nice and stable. So this blue ribbon represents our chain of amino acids. And as you can see, as you keep going along the amino acids, you can see these CO groups sticking out. And you can also see the various NH groups sticking out too, sometimes from the same amino acid, sometimes from different ones. But the point is they're kind of running all along the chain. And we've already said how the charge on the oxygen is usually a minus and the charge on the hydrogen is a plus. And so wherever you get these coming in contact with each other, you'll have hydrogen bonds forming. So there's one here connecting these two, one around there, one here, etc. And you can see that overall, all of these hydrogen bonds are going to keep this in the same coiled up alpha helix structure. One of them on its own wouldn't be enough, but overall we form this alpha helix. It's the same kind of idea in beta pleated sheets. The chains form a zigzag structure and they end up folding over themselves. So this time we've got a chain of amino acids running along here, and we've got one running along here too. And then whenever these NH groups and CO groups come into contact again, they'll start forming hydrogen bonds. So we've got some here, some here, and some here. The point is they're still holding that structure together. Hydrogen bonds on their own are weak intermolecular forces, but overall through the protein, there'll be many hundreds of them keeping that secondary structure stable. So just to go over that again, we had our initial primary structure, which is just a chain of amino acids, and then it's hydrogen bonding, which occurs between particular amino acids, which tightens it up into one of two structures, either an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. And so by definition, the secondary structure of a protein is the curling or folding of the polypeptide chain into alpha helices and beta pleated sheets due to the formation of hydrogen bonds. So it's just hydrogen bonds keeping all of these shapes together, nothing else. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.